Kia ora and welcome to Just The Job, your first port of call when it comes to finding out about a whole lot of exciting career opportunities. And this week, we've got three completely different careers for you to check out. In today's show, Cam from Te Aumuru College gets up close and personal with some four-legged friends when he learns some of the tasks involved in being a vet. Then we'll be joining Heather from Oriwa College as she checks out what it takes to be a key account manager with Coca-Cola Amatil. And in our final segment this week, we look at the career of a removalist with Dwayne from Onihanga High School. Just a quick heads up before we join Cam, the role of a vet does involve a bit of blood, gore and delving into the unknown. So prepare yourself if you're a little squeamish. Here we go. Hey, I'm Cam Chatterton. I go to Tamaru College, I'm year 12, and I think a career with animals would be the best. Today I'm going to see what it's like to be a veterinarian. Cam is at Vet Ent in Te Aumuru. Vet Ent is one of New Zealand's largest veterinary businesses and has the capability to treat animals large and small. And Cam meets go. Vet Crispin Cannon and here comes the first patient of the day. So Cam, this is Chip. He's in for the, in for the day and what he's yep. going to get is castration today. After explaining the risks to Chip's family, he is anaesthetised and Cam scrubs up puts on a brave face and gets ready for Chip's castration. Um, I'm pretty nervous because I don't want to do anything wrong. As there will be a bit of blood when you start incising. So this is a swab, if you hold on to that. We're just going to make this incision big enough. Yep. So I'll just get your dab there. Brilliant. So a little bit. There we go. So. Jeez. Just very quickly, testicle there. OK. Yep. That's where the sperm is formed. Yep comes around into an epididymis. So that's where the sperm matures. As you can see, there's a huge blood supply. It's very important to get this just ligated and closed off before we go any further. Cam holds Chip's testicle while Crispin clamps and stitches Chip's tubes shut. You feeling all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling fine. It's kind of weird being in this situation, but it's not really what I expected. It's a bit more full on, but it's good. I'm learning a lot. So Cam, now, we're gonna, now we'll cut it yep. between the two clamps. I see. Brilliant. So you can take that one away. Yep. So now that's one down. We'll do exactly the same on this side. OK. It was a pretty crazy experience, but it was good. Hey guys, how are you going? Here's Chip. He's all well awake and chipper, as you'd say. Chip's operation went well. And it's time for Cam to try his steady hand with large animal vet, Emma Boyd. Go in and just grab her tongue, grab her tongue. It's quite grippy and yank it out, yank it out. This cow has a lump on its face and Emma needs to check that it's not an abscess from an infected tooth. You're doing really well for your first time taking a tongue. Perfect. So now we can have a really good look in her mouth. Is there anything there? No, not that I can see. Everything looks fine. So what we've got here is a lot of bone forming over the old infection, which is normal and she'll probably, she'll probably be fine. Yeah. Being a vet means knowing animals back to front. So Cam does an ultrasound pregnancy test on a couple of cows. And then we'd want to direct that into the, into the rectum. Perfect. That cool. is perfect. OK. Yep. Oh, see, see how that bright thing just in the screen? That's its head. It's oh, a really? calf's head and its nose just popping out there. Oh, wow. OK, just there it is again. That's pretty cool, eh? Oh. And they move. See, see how I'm staying still and that calf is moving, so it, it's dancing in and out of our screen. So yeah. it's, it's having a wee party in there. This cow is only one in a herd of 200, and today's vets analyse data like pregnancy and milk yield to keep the herd in top production and health. So the first major point is this major spike here is where we came in and intervened. And you actually had a really good conception rate. And because they can see what's happened in the past, farmers can plan for the future. Vets are very important. You can't live without them. The work that they do is brilliant. Um, the data and information they collect and the advice that they give to the farmer, I rate it 10 out of 10. For me personally, the biggest reward of being a vet is seeing a difference to a herd. And you get to see the farmer benefit from it. That is just the most wonderful experience. Vets enjoy working with a variety of animals. Cam meets a baby alpaca born this morning and gets stuck into some preventative work for an alpaca herd. Yeah. For anyone that's wanting to become a vet, the first thing is that you don't have to be really smart, but you do have to have a work ethic. 
A career as a vet will take you wherever you want to go. You can obviously work either as a clinical vet, you can work within industries such as the Dairy NZ, you can go and work for drug companies, you can do research, you can do management, and that's what's so wonderful about degree, you're not limited to doing the one thing. At the vet school at Massey is absolutely brilliant, probably the best time of my life, because you have a, about 100 like-minded people in your class that you just have five years of great fun with. It is a wonderful job. You couldn't go wrong with a career choice. I am excited to go to work every single day and I've been excited now for three and a half years so you can't go wrong with choosing a vet degree. Cam's about to learn that vets are trained for anything. We've got a couple of cows that have some inflammation in their nose. It's the only way they know how to itch it is to try and put sticks up there, which means that they get stuck up there. So I just want you to get your fingers, put it up her nose and just feel them on the tip of your finger yep. and the other side as well. Have a, oh, have a, yeah, yeah. See how you feel the tip of a stick? Yeah. Feels good to get it out. Cool. Well, she's going to feel so much better after that. Ugh. Now this cow needs medication to fight infection. Perfect. Now you can attach the syringe. Now you can push the antibiotic in. Cam was awesome. He got stuck in and I was really impressed. It went great. I got put in different situations, which made me feel kind of afraid and nervous, but excited at the same time. And um, I would definitely love to be a veterinarian. To be a veterinarian in New Zealand, you'll first need a tertiary entrance qualification, bursary or NCEA level three. Preferred subjects are English, physics, chemistry and biology. Then you'll need a Bachelor of Veterinary Science, which is a five-year degree only available from Massey University in Palmerston North. Veterinarians must register with the Veterinary Council of New Zealand. The New Zealand Veterinary Association represents New Zealand veterinarians and is the collective voice for its members and the profession. Well done, Cam. You've certainly gone where many would fear to go and, in my opinion, definitely have what it takes to become a vet. We're back after the break with Heather, who's checking out a career as a key account manager with Coca-Cola Amatil. See you soon. Welcome back to Just The Job. Let's join Heather now as she finds out more about what's involved in looking after Coca-Cola's key customers. Hi, I'm Heather Wilcock. I'm from Oriwa College, and today I want to find out what it's like to be a key account manager at Coca-Cola Amatil. Heather's meeting Michael Tutty, a top key account manager at the Coca-Cola Amatil New Zealand headquarters oh, in Auckland. Hi, Show me what you do. Awesome, come on in and I'll show you around. Cool. Well, Michael, this place is huge. Yeah, you're right. It's pretty big. This is our Auckland warehouse, and you're right, the thing's massive. So how many cases get sent out? Well, across the country, we probably send out about half a million boxes a week. Whoa. Coca-Cola Amatil New Zealand employs 1,100 people, and last year, Coke's key account managers helped sell an epic 22 million cases. So what is a key account manager? What do you do? Well, in essence, a key account manager maintains the relationship between us and some of our key customers. So this is our um, sales rep area with a lot of our other key account managers sit. Um, as you can see, there's, uh, it's actually pretty quiet here this morning. Most of our time will be spent out with customers. Going into the sales room this morning was quite intimidating because as soon as you walk in the door, you're confronted with all these people on their laptops looking really serious and getting their work done felt like I was almost disturbing them in some way because they're under such pressure to get their sales done. But after being in there for a bit and the tension had kind of settled, they were really nice and really friendly to me and they were just, you know, normal people having a laugh with each other and, yeah, it was good fun. To become a key account manager, you'll need proven sales experience. Numerical, analytical and communication skills are essential and the right attitude is important. At Coke Uni, Michael and Heather join in a role-playing exercise aimed at helping her recognise four basic customer personalities in the field. Hi, I'm Heather from Coke and I'm just here to take your order. Oh, hey Heather, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Oh, good, how was your weekend? You're trying to be my friend, the guy who tries to make friends with everyone, yep. right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm just here to promote our new energy drink, Mother. Mm. Okay. Can I tell you a little bit about it? Um... Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Mm. You're being the thinker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'll take a case. Take a case. Have you got a fridge I can put it in? Um, yes, I can arrange one for you. Awesome. Are you awesome. being the entrepreneur? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, I could tell. <laughs> now we know the people, we get to know the product in a sales meeting about Mother Energy Drink. 
Sales meetings are a great place for us to hear all the information that we need to know about what's happening at Coke and also things that we might need to pass on to our customers. So we'll head on in there now, eh? Cool. Cool. So what do you guys think of the taste of the product? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good. It's the same product as the 500ml can, um, but what we've done is we've brought it out into a slightly smaller size. James, where would you see this working for some of your accounts? I'd say probably in, again, some of the hospitality setups, so like some of the bars. So Heather, um, what about you? What do you think of potentially where it might be able to be sold? And I think it could be sold really well with universities and students because staying up late for exams and studying, it just helps them get through, get through the studying process. <laughs> Right, well now that we've got you trained up, how about we put you to the test? Do you think you're up for it? Definitely, maybe. <laughs> well, there's only one way to find out, so let's go. What makes a good key account manager? Um, I think the really important thing is to have a really good attitude uh, and to have a sense of sort of taking ownership for something. What I mean by that, I guess, is you start something, you see it all the way through to the end. I think that's really important. What's cool about being a key account manager? It's awesome to be able to get out on the road and go out and visit your customers and spend time with them. Uh, you're not stuck in a boring office. Auckland Overseas. Uni is an important Just account for Coke. There are 45,000 people in the target market here, so the pressure is on for Heather. OK, so I'm kind of nervous. So what do I say? We probably could start out by asking you how drink sales are going. Maybe find out whether there's some products which are selling really well and if there's any that aren't. It's always good, I think, as well, maybe just to check the fridges, make sure that they're cold and they look good, because no one really likes buying warm, warm drinks from an <laughs> ugly looking fridge. So the reason why we put products in a certain place in the fridge is to make it really easy for the consumers to shop. So we have all the carbonated soft drinks in this area and we have all the water in the next. Ah, oh, OK. The fridges are stocked, but there is something missing. This is Heather's shot to expand Auckland Uni's product range. Hey, so this is Heather. She's Hi. helping me out Hi, Heather. today. Nice to meet you, Holly. <laughs> is it all right if I ask, uh, talk to you a bit about a new product? Oh, certainly. This is Mother. This is a new version. This is in a 300ml can as preferred to 250ml and 500 hmm. Are there any questions you have about the product? Uh, I'm wondering, though, how does it sell on the other campuses? Holly was being careful and kind of trying to be a careful thinker. You're being the thinker. Yeah, the main thing that I was trying to be was persuasive, but in a thoughtful, kind of considerate way, because you can't be too pushy with the client. I'm not sure about it. Uh, we do so well with our other ones. Um... Well, we can actually put up promotional things like posters and stands to help promote the product. OK, Heather, I think we'll try it. Just with Lovely. your help in the cafe, we'll try it. So I'll order you two cases for your next order. OK, Heather, cool. thank you thank so much. Thank you. That was really cool. Where do I sign up? Oh, we've actually got the perfect thing. Come on, I'll show you. You can apply for jobs online by going to cokecareers.co.nz and you get regular updates whenever jobs become available. So that's how you get into the ground floor, but how do you make it to the top? Well, the advice I'd give to young people starting at Coke uh, is really is to come in with your eyes open and just focus on being good at what you do. Uh, pick up any chance you can to learn and develop, uh, and they will come your way in, in such a fast-moving business. Because the reality is, if you're good at what you do today in this company, you get noticed. So, has Heather got what it takes? Yeah, I think uh, Heather would be a great asset to the team here at Coke. She's really passionate, energetic. I'm sure all of us would love to have her back. It went really well. I loved every minute of it. I had a really good time. The people I got to work with were great, and I would love to be a key account manager. To become a key account manager, you'll need proven sales experience. Numerical, analytical, and communication skills are essential, and the right attitude is important. The possibilities are endless with a multinational company like Coke, and they can help you get there with Coke Uni. You can apply online at www.cokecareers.co.nz. I think Heather has found the perfect job, so well done. After the break, we're joining Dwayne, who's keen to learn about a career in commercial removals. You're watching Just The Job, the place to be to find out more about the huge range of careers that are out there waiting for you. Now, next up, Dwayne discovers there's more to being a removalist than meets the eye. My name's Dwayne, and I'm a year 13 student at Onihanga High School. Today, I want to find out what it takes to be a removalist. Dwayne's at World Moving in West Auckland to meet the boss Raymond Dobby, who built World Moving up over 15 years to become a world-class leading removals company. Hey, Dwayne, is it? Yes. How are you, mate? All right. I yeah, hear you want to be a removalist in a relocations company. Yes, I do. Fantastic. 
Right, now you're looking more like a removalist. Well done. The removalists at World Moving pack and move people's things between places locally and internationally. We've got a car over here which has just come in yesterday from the USA. People's things also get stored in containers for long periods in the warehouse. But because World Moving gets things from all over the planet, Dwayne has a very important job to do with removalist Crystal Morgan and MAF officer Dave Dowling. New Zealand is at constant risk from harmful foreign pests, plants and diseases, so removalists work with MAF to keep them out. We've got to be very careful because uh, we've done the initial check when we opened the container to make sure there was no creepy crawlies, but we don't check inside the vehicle. So you to watch your back, there could be like um, spiders or snakes hiding in the little nooks and crannies of the car, so you know, when we're checking, just watch your back. What we'll do first off is, is uh, we'll do an internal inspection of the vehicle. Oh, I think I found something. Uh, it looks like a seed. It goes to good work here. It's exactly what the sort of thing they were looking for. Luckily, there aren't any creepy crawlies. But to be on the safe side, Dwayne Steen cleans the American dirt off and isolates the water in an underground tank. <laughs> Shot bow, good job. All done. On a well-earned break, Dwayne does some more investigation with removalist Zach Ferguson. So what's the job like? <laughs> it's all good. You get around a lot, travel-wise. You to meet a lot of different people. Uh, does the job keep you fit? Yeah, yeah, job keeps you fit. You're always active, really. It's pretty much like coming to the gym every day, really. Hey, there's enough playtime now, boys. Uh, we'll get into the assessment now, eh? What we're doing is an assessment. He's going to stow the container. Crystal has been certified as a workplace assessor by the Removals Industry Training Organisation, Transpol. So, what's the trick with this? Oh, it, uh, this is just pretty much like a jigsaw puzzle. And if there's any movement in the container, things could move around and break. So we want to get everything in there as tight as possible so nothing can move. So the National Certificate and Relocations is a certificate of competency for the people within our industry. They are very skilled at what they do and they're professionals. And if they come to me from another company, they've got it. I have the confidence in knowing that I can employ them. Hi, morning. Hi, I'm here to pick up the job sheet for the next job. All right, you're looking at Mr. Palmer in Bayswater for an international pack and wrap. This one's a VIP, so put on the charm. <laughs> Dwayne doesn't say much, but he can talk with his hands. And after loading up the right packing gear, it's time to do what all removalists love. Hit the open road. It's like working with a big family. Uh, everyone's pretty close at work, so um, yeah, it's like working with a whole bunch of your brothers. So there's a, a bit of banter on the road. All right, your time to shine now, boat. I'm going to let you meet and greet the client. So uh, this will be a first impression. So first impressions count. Uh, they're going to figure out whether or not they're going to trust you by by the first two minutes. So be polite, respectful. Remember, this is their house, and, and they have to try and trust us and while we're packing. And we're here to pack your goods and send it to Australia. Yeah, and there's also a antique, fragile stool that I want you to be extra careful with. Don't worry about it, because we're the perfect people for the job. So if you could show us your antique, we could see what we can do. OK, cool. We'll come inside. Dwayne rips into wrapping, but there's an art to packing quickly and safely that's learned over time. It's harder than it looks, eh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. You just hold it like that. Pull and then twist your wrist. But be careful, because sometimes they bite. Uh, I'm pretty crap at this job. <laughs> it's all right, you'll, you'll get the knack of it. It gets easier the more you do it. Not too bad on your first try. It's not looking too shabby. How's it going? Good, isn't it? All good. While in the customer's home, it's not just about packing quickly. There's the added pressure of the customer's expectation. I'm feeling pretty nervous, eh? Having the customer look at me is like... brings pressure. You, know, you don't want to ruin their furniture. Were you nervous when you first did this job? Yeah, I was pretty nervous, um, and I think it showed, because the client was very worried about me packing her things, so... Uh, but nerves come off it, you'll get used to it, and uh, it'll all come natural. Just slide that one in there, on the side. Should fit nicely. 
this truckload is going to Australia. But is Dwayne going places? Oh, Dwayne did really well today. He, um, he was very keen, eager. Um, he paid attention and um, showed a lot of potential. I think Dwayne did great. He's only a young guy, he needs to come out of his shell a bit, but um, he's obviously been raised well. He's got a nice attitude about him. He's a nice young lad, and that's half of what I'm looking for. We can train him the rest. He was keen to give it a go. He fitted in well. I'd take him on. Yeah, definitely. I'd definitely do this job. There are no specific entry requirements to enter a career as a removalist, and there are lots of opportunities to work straight from school. Removals are fast-paced and challenging, so workers have to be fit and strong. You can work towards a national certificate in relocations operations while on the job, avoiding a student loan. Today, there are so many exciting career options out there, it's not easy to make a choice. But by watching Just The Job, you might just see something that'll help you to decide. To help you even more, Salon from Careers New Zealand is up next with some excellent advice on finding the right job for you. The pressure of deciding on one career path for the rest of your life is pretty unrealistic these days, especially for a young person just starting out. Your skills and interests change as you grow. What you love doing now could be different in 10 years' time as industries shift and new jobs appear. Change is constant and no matter what career direction you choose, there'll always be more to learn. So pick a field that interests you, that you want to learn more about, and get started. To find out more about the careers featured this week and more info about how to make that right career choice, jump on our website, tvnz.co.nz slash just the job. So good hunting, and I'll see you again next week. Zealand on air.